<laughs> I was recording that whole time. Wait, why are there footsteps up to my step? Who's been up to my step this morning? If you're new here, I should say this in the first minute of the video. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Jess and I am a very chatty, <laughs> chatty, chatty, I'm a very chatty booktuber. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Fifi. Do you want to go outside and see the snow? I, for some reason, think that it's totally safe to go outside right now without a hat on. This is, um, what do they say in reality TV? Behind the scenes, live and uncut. It's real life, y'all. It's the real reels. It's real stuff. Please ignore the mess. Please always, I think I should just have that caveat like on all of my, all of my vlogs. Please ignore the mess because I thought, oh, I could run around the house and like tidy everything up. It's a little bit the same as like the whole like myself together deal. And I do like to be put together. I mean, it's not like I didn't wash my face this morning, but there's only so far I'm willing to go for vanity. It's beginning to look like Christmas. Everywhere you go. Oh, that crunchy sound of the ice, guys, look at the snow. I mean, I know it's just a sprinkling, but it is our first real snow where there's actually snow left on the ground and a lot of ice, I might say. A dangerous amount of ice. Yeah, so winter is here, everyone. So happy winter. It's going to be six months long. Happy winter. Happy six months of ice and snow. Okay, so I've officially like gotten some sense into me and gotten a hat because it is quite cold today. The sun is super bright, uh, but it's freezing. And so yeah, I've got a hat on and I'm gonna take you along. I'm gonna go pick up a car and we're gonna go to do some shopping, some Christmas shopping. And hopefully we find some cool, nice things. It's not gonna be book shopping, but it's gonna be, I don't know, just looking for like, looking for some cute little house decorations and just checking it out. It's a really, probably a dangerous move to go now. I have to watch my step because it's so icy right now. It's, t it's terrifying. They don't, they make winter seem so pretty and everything, but the ice, is so dangerous. I should look up the stats of how many people end up in the hospital because of ice. Falling on ice, I'm telling you, that's what happens to people. It's happened to me several times. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna go shopping for some decorations, which I'm pretty stoked about. And yeah, I, what I was gonna say is that it's a dangerous, <laughs> potentially a dangerous outing because it's Saturday. <laughs> downtown Montreal on a Saturday during Black Friday weekend. What could go wrong, right? day today despite the ice and the 
conditions. Uh, Montreal is a very beautiful city to be in in the winter and architecturally it's such a gorgeous city. I once took, I did take an architecture class when I was a student and I remember our architecture teacher would take us on architectural walks. I don't think it's uncommon. And she would often say, remember to look up. So yeah, just a little reminder in your day as you're running around town doing whatever it is you're doing, if you happen to be in a city that has some old buildings, look up, look up. There are gargoyles sometimes, there are all kinds of things to see up there. We went to the Bay, which is a Canadian department store, and I picked up some cute things, but I'm gonna save that for another time. A little later in the vlog, I'll show you everything that I got. I'm gonna try to read. <laughs> the idea was to read. So the three books that I'm gonna start with are three books that I chose. Oh, I don't have the prompts. <sighs> okay. I'll include the prompts that these are for in the description box below because I didn't, I don't remember all of the prompts. I actually saw that there are tons of, well, not tons, but there are many other reading, Christmas reading challenges happening. And I was tempted to join another one or perhaps another two, but I did put on the brakes and said, no, I'm going to uh, stick with one for this year. I'm already doing a lot more than I've ever done. I only started this YouTube channel last January or no, last March. I started this YouTube channel last March during the Taylor Swift inspired readathon called Tis the Damn Readathon. Anyhow, I digress. These are the books that I'm going to be reading. I wasn't debating between doing a vlog of reading two books or reading three books. So I thought I would get a jump on it's not december 1st yet so i cannot start until december 1st what are we today or the weekend of the 27th so 27th 28th and like i said i'll put the prompts associated with the books below so the first book that i want to read for the for, to start off the readathon is blonde roots by bernadine evaristo so if you saw my tbr my december tbr video it describes the the reindeer readathon challenge and I pick out my TBR in that video. So you can check that out if you want to see all of my selections for this readathon and my TBR for the month of December. I have never read any Bernadine Evaristo, so I am really looking forward to this. It's a reverse slavery story or reimagining of what what it would be like if Europeans were enslaved to Africans and so I'm going to read this on the vlog you'll find out one of the prompts was to read something with red or green on the cover and I originally chose milk by Anna Burns and I do want, want to read milk so but it's pink on the cover it's not red on the cover so I decided I'm a stickler for rules anyway so I like to follow the rules. So in order for me to follow the rules, the only book that I have on my shelf that has really any red on the cover is The Dutch House by Anne Pratchett. I do adore Anne Pratchett. I, the most recent Anne Pratchett I read was Commonwealth and I really, really enjoyed it. It was so good. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I don't know very much about it. I know that it's about a brother and a sister who inherit an estate. It also seems like it's um, uh, about family history and I think the family started off poor. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm not sure. I don't, if you've been around my channel for a while, I do not like to read the backs because I like to be surprised by the book. And I also give spoilers sometimes when I'm doing reading vlogs. So watch out. I'll try to warn everyone. I don't like spoilers myself, but I have no issue giving them. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited about those. I'm looking forward to reading those two books. They look really good. And then the third one, I'm really trying to start off with a bang because I want to really embrace the reading spirit this holiday and take the time that I have to really enjoy reading because I don't always have time to enjoy reading. And I want to earn as many points as I can for my team. You can see in my dreams, I'll hold a knife. Kayla uh, recommended this. So this is the prompt is something that recently caught your eye. It's, it says right, right across the front, 
an addictive and riveting psychological thriller. So I always like my thrillers. And I think it will be fast and fun to read this. It's set, I believe it's a group of friends who graduated together from high, from high school or maybe university and they are coming back for a reunion and somebody was murdered or died, probably was murdered. <laughs> and they're trying to, I guess, unravel who later on, 10 years on, who the killer is and I'm assuming it's somebody among the group so that will be really fun to read and I will keep you updated. I'm not really sure where I'm going to start. I don't know which one to start with. They all seem so good. Maybe I will be reading them all simultaneously which I also have a tendency to do. I have a tendency to read books simultaneously. Yeah that's a thing I do. What am I going to start with? To wait to find out. If you're participating in the readathon or if you want to participate in the readathon, that would be awesome. Let me know if you're going to participate in or if you're participating in the comments below. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh boy, so things are a bit chaos in my life, my house, my life. It's all a little chaotic. It is. What day are we? Okay, so I started this vlog on the weekend and I realized that I couldn't start reading the books that I want to read in the vlog until Tuesday because I'm reading them as part of the Reindeer Readathon and Tuesday was the first day. Tuesday was December 1st and if I'd started reading them sooner I would have been jumping the gun, so to speak. So I didn't do that. <laughs> I started reading the books yesterday. Uh, I do, I am going to include some of that day's um, footage. You probably already just watched it because we went shopping and we got some really cute items for Christmas decorating. So yeah, I started reading the books. Sorry for the chaotic like situation. Uh, just to give you um, some background, I started a renovation on my house and it's not a, not anything you want to hear about because it was it's been a bit of a disaster. This is like my office, so it's the same room where the bookshelf is that I just built. <laughs> it's also my living room <laughs> where I sometimes film and it it was my bedroom. <laughs> So all this to say that I don't haven't moved all the furniture out of here. My dresser is still here. I haven't moved all the furniture out of here into my new bedroom because my new bedroom isn't finished because I'm waiting on all these requirements for the permit. So yeah, all this to say that's kind of a bummer. I also am shooting this morning in here because it's where my vanity is and I'm going to put on makeup. I know that I complain about not wearing makeup, but I'm going to put on makeup today because I made this really cute... I don't know if uh, any of you use a bullet journal, but I started bullet journaling at the beginning of this year and I made this cute spread. I'm just gonna pull it up for you. I don't know if you can see, but it says countdown to the holidays in the middle. And it's basically an advent calendar with prompts. And I'm gonna link a Caitlin De Silva's channel down below. She does these fantastic spreads, and this was this is like a direct replica of her spread. Honestly, like it's her, it's her spread. So all credit where credit is due. Thank you, Caitlin. So my prompt for today, on the second, we're the second now. My prompt for today is to wear sparkle eyeshadow. So outside of my outside of my kind of rant about wearing makeup, it's gonna be like it's gonna be a fun makeup little session. You're going to see how terrible I am at putting on makeup, which is one of the reasons why I don't like wearing it. So I'm going to talk about the reads. I have started two books. So I started uh, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and I also started Blonde Roots and they're both off to a cracking start. So that's a really good sign for my team. Go team candy cane! Meaning that I think I'm going to breeze right through these. Uh, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife is exceptionally readable. Its main character, Jessica Miller, we meet Jessica Miller just as she's about to go uh, back for a reunion to see all of her former classmates from a decade ago. In particular, she's going, she meets up, we already have, like I'm about 60 pages in and we've, she's already been to the first night 
of this reunion. Many of the people that she was in a clique are there. This fur segment introduces us to all of those characters and the different relationships are starting to be presented of who's with whom and kind of the dynamics within the group, especially the dynamics with the women in the group. Uh, our main character, Jessica Miller, is feeling, she seems to have uh, like an inferiority complex or she talks about like not being noticed, not being seen. She talks about how common the name Jessica is, which I can relate to. <laughs> Although I'm not gonna give you guys my age, but when I was born and named Jessica, Jessica was not a popular name, but all of a sudden it became like the most popular name and you know, much to my chagrin. I do love my name, but <laughs> I was named Jessica after The Merchant of Venice. And it's interesting because I just watched the 2004 film adaptation of The Merchant of Venice. I don't know if anyone's familiar with The Merchant of Venice and I'm totally going off topic here, which I tend to do in my vlogs. Uh, if you have a chance and if you're familiar with the play of The Merchant of Venice, I highly recommend you check out the adaptation. It's not perfect, it's not great. The Merchant of Venice is, is is really understood to be a very anti-Semitic play, but it's in part anti-Semitic because of the way that it's taught. It's taught from the Christian point of view most of the time. Uh, the 2004 version of the film is worth checking out, not so much for the direction that the way it's presented is still pretty anti-Semitic, which is obviously problematic. Oh, hey everyone. <laughs> I just switched to my iPhone because my battery died. It'll be interesting to see the contrast of the quality uh, I don't even know if I need my vlog camera. I think it's possible the iPhone is all you need, really. Okay, wait, so where was I? Oh, yes. Just to say, check out the 2004 version of A Merchant in Venice because Al Pacino does a crazy, like a crazy excellent job playing Shylock in this version. And so that's really... I don't know, do you need more of a recommendation than that? You want to check it out. I feel you want to check it out. Okay, back to <laughs> In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. <laughs> Jumping around a lot. I uh, hope I'm not making anyone just Jessica being um, a common name. Her first name is Jessica, her last name is Miller. And just, she keeps referring to how forgettable she is or how invisible she feels. I don't know what to make of her character at the moment. Like, I can't decide whether... We're just in the beginnings of this. I read Bunny in the summer, so if you want to check out the vlog of my reading Bunny, it was so good. I loved it so much. You can definitely see that the kind of Heather's Mean Girls character influences. I'm liking that vibe a lot and I knew that that was the vibe going in. So I'm sure this is going to be a quick and a fun read. Uh, one of the characters is murdered earlier so it goes back and forth between the present day and the past. So when it goes back to the past it's, it's setting up the relationships and obviously setting the scene for the lead up of events to when this person is killed. At the reunion I'm guessing there's going to be some revelation about who the real killer is but I don't know, I'm just predicting. So yay, I'm gonna be finishing this up I think real quick. And I also started Blonde Roots. Oh my gosh, this one starts out with a bang. I said I was gonna put on makeup in this video, didn't I? Okay, I won't keep holding the book, but I will talk about the Blonde Roots while I try to put on some makeup. I'm trying to read like 150 pages a day, which is kind of ambitious for me because I'm quite a slow reader. I really am not a fast reader. And I don't have either one of these I don't have any of the books on audiobook except for I think I'm going to get The Idiot on audiobook because there's a bonus um, for audio. Look how I don't even use a brush. Look, I know I'm supposed to use a brush, so let me let me just dab and then I will use a brush. You have to get rid of these dark circles. Oh, and I know why the title is Blonde Roots now. Like, I had a few guesses. Like, it obviously has a double entendre. It's like the rever a reverse slave story. The opening of the book is a uh, European slave girl being offered the opportunity to escape which very exciting so it starts off very exciting and in the process of us her talking about narrating her own escape she also narrate kind of the history of how she was enslaved uh, at a young age and there are all of these really interesting of the ways that enslaved uh, people so like the parallels to black enslavement. And it's just completely reversed to highlight, I think she does a really good job of this, to highlight, you know, what you take away from a people and 
in, in one, on the one hand, what you take away from an individual, and on the other hand, what you take away from the people when you enslave them. There's a couple of really great references to hair. One is the way that her master wants her to wear her hair, which is really thin and blonde, which is a reference to the title. And, that, and the, this, this excerpt about hair is where you realize that the title comes specifically from hair and blonde roots being the color of the roots and roots of course being where you're from and the referencing to, of roots to, let me put on my sparkly eyeshadow yet, but the referencing of our roots to storytelling about slavery. Blonde roots is obvious the slaves here have blonde roots. During her escape in the process of her escape, she goes to the downtown, like she goes into town and there she's talking about the hairdressers, white hairdressers and white is spelled W-H-Y-T-E. So she writes, there were also white hairdressers who sold thin toothed combs for our unmanageable flyaway fine hair. In the birds, you rarely see a free white with natural hair. They wore the perms, twists, and braids of Ambassan women, although afros were most in demand. The hairdressers used kinky African hair on the Burbite women who had their own fine hair chopped off and these bushy pieces sewn into them so that the effect was naturally but unnaturally African. It took up to 10 hours and when the blonde, red, brown or straight roots came through it looked just plain tacky apparently. So that's the reference to blonde roots. I don't know because I'm obviously not black but the idea that comes to my mind is the conditioning to change your hair and the conditioning to do it in a way that is really unsustainable, is unnatural, and shows your your it, it reveals you. I mean, the just the whole first section is just a, a commentary like this, and it's incredible. And it has a great story because we start off with our our girl escaping. Now, I don't think I can pronounce her African name. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. This made me think of when I was. This is so embarrassing because I mispronounced uh, Yad Yasi Yad name in my. TBR video and I'm so embarrassed. And names are just so difficult, like they're so tricky. I apologize if I offended anyone by mispronouncing her name. But when I was reading this, I also thought, wow, that is just not abnormal, right? Because this slave's name is Omorenamwara. That's her African name. Just at the end of this chapter, when she's getting into the cab or that she's, no, she's meeting the person from the resistance who's helping her escape. And she gives her white name, uh, or she asks to be called. She says, please call me Doris. I am Doris. My name is Doris. The driver grinned and tried to repeat my real appellation slowly, looking embarrassed, breaking it down into three elongated syllables, his tongue stumbling over the strange phonetics. He looked so pleased when he managed to pronounce it. Honestly, it was truly endearing. Dora Shah he said. Names, man. Whew. Like, I think I've mentioned it on this channel before because I do have trouble with names when I'm when I'm speaking about authors. And like I said, it's, uh, it's a really tricky thing because you don't always know how a name is pronounced until somebody says it to you. And even when someone says it to you, you might not naturally be able to pronounce it well. It's Spanish, roll me your R's. But yeah, I mispronounce names all the time. I mispronounce uh, authors' names from different countries all the time. <laughs> And it's truly embarrassing and I will try to do better. And I also have like total like empathy for that because <laughs> I didn't know. When you, when you know better, you do better. Wasn't it Maya Angelou who said that? Okay, time for the sparkly makeup. Lots of sparkly choices. It's got three different sparkly choices and I can't decide which one. So I think I'm gonna go with this light pink. I'm I'm very like makeup shy. Oh, this is really pretty. Um, yeah, so it's my sparkly eyeshadow day. I'll check it back in with you all later. It's a rainy day. I have stuff to do. Oh, I didn't show you what we bought. Mm, maybe I'll do that later. But I'm gonna try to get 150 pages right. Yay. Talk to you guys soon. Oh, it's so hot in here. Nobody, I don't know, I have like not wanted to find out too much about this book, so I haven't looked anything up. Like I haven't watched any reviews. I don't know anything, I like to not know anything going in and oh, there's, I just finished reading like a super steamy, whoo, so steamy, that little, I mean, I had to tear myself away, honestly. <laughs> Woo. I wasn't expecting that, you know. I wasn't expecting that to come from this mystery. So our main character, Jessica, 
is sharing her first kiss with a guy. <laughs> This is in the this is in the sequence that's in their in her freshman year of uh, university, and there's a reference to sixteen candles. Oh, I can't remember the male character's name. I think his name is Jake. Comes to her house like he's standing by the car, and then she has her birthday cake, and they're like they kiss over. There's anybody out there who hasn't watched Sixteen Candles? I feel that could be impossible, but if there's anyone who hasn't watched Sixteen Candles yet, or John Hughes, any John Hughes uh, movie for that matter, you might want to might want to brush up on your '80s uh, high school depictions starting with The Breakfast Club. But I just can't imagine that there's anybody watching my channel who hasn't. Anyhow, so that's fun. That was a fun reference. And in terms of the plot, evolving now around the male characters and their relationships to Jessica. So, I mean, I'm not that much farther along, honestly. I just had a really busy morning. I mean, I was really tired last night. Whew. I don't know if it's the change, I think it's the change in the clocks, but with the change in the clocks, I just get really tired really early now. So I'm only on chapter nine. I have I have some more reading I wanna do. So I'll update you again a little later on that one. And um, in terms of Blonde Roots, I got a bit further last night too, but not all that much farther. And it's really great, kind of continuing in the same vein. A lot of the observations that I shared with you yesterday are being, I think what stood out to me is that, I don't wanna ruin this book for anyone, but. Uh, it's taken a bit of a more serious turn. Like not that it wasn't serious to begin with, but the beginning started like, with the adventure of her running away, and now we're back into the history, her the story of how she was captured as a slave, and it's a little, it's kind of dark. It's quite dark. It got dark all of a sudden, and I'm hoping that we get back to. Hope it's not all like pain and suffering. I hope we get back to a little bit of the adventure. I hope there's a good balance of like doses of the heavy and doses of the of the adventure story. Uh, just I don't know for just for my heart's sake. Uh, so yeah, that it's still um, going quickly. I think as I said, I'm trying to read about 150 pages a day. But I had a couple of other books which I'll talk about later in I guess in my wrap up for the month or for the year that I wanted to finish and I didn't quite get them done for the first of December. So I'm just finishing off my reading from November, I guess. I, I find it really difficult that it, you know, in the booktube world where everything is split in these months because I don't, it's not particularly realistic. I can see that a lot of booktubers are like struggle with that. So I don't know. I tried to in, instigate the carryover book tag way back when I started out. I think it would be great to just have just a book chat or a book wrap up. I'm from the Maritimes. Any Canadians out there from the Maritimes, we chit chat a lot. <laughs> we are chatty. Chit chatty. So let me just show you some of the things that I picked up uh, when we were out shopping because I didn't have a chance to do that yet. You know, I wanted to get kind of into the holiday spirit. So I got a, a wreath for downstairs, which you probably saw. I showed a clip of it in the beginning. So the big, my big purchase are these pillows. <laughs> are they cute? They have these pom-poms on them. That was like my big, that was my big spend was to get a couple of cozy pillows for the holidays. And I found these at uh, uh, Zone, which is the place that I took a bunch of footage from and showed you. They're super cute. That's my big, that's my big holiday purchase. That and this cute blanket, which I picked up. It's cute. It's got, you know, it's got snowmen and it's super warm and cozy because it gets really cold in my house. I have a really old creaky house with lots of cracks and very expensive to heat. And so we stock up on cozy blankets and cozy wool socks and layers to keep warm. I usually, I mean, I'm surprised I'm not filming in a toque right now because I usually wear a toque all winter <laughs> inside. So yeah, it's super warm, this blanket. I got it at um, Simon's and I had one in, the one in a lighter color because I have this light colored um, couch in my uh, living room, but they were sold out. It's one of, was one of those things where you, you really have to get the thing when you see it because for whatever reason, things seem to be selling out like crazy this time of year. Not to be over, you know, consume, 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 buy it now. I hate that mentality, but there's something to be said for picking it up if it's something that you think you really, really want and you don't think there's very many. Because people are out. People are shopping like 
crazy. It's got to be pandemic stress that people are shopping off. Sorry the light's been coming in and out a bit. What do I have on the agenda today? Oh, I am going to get my nails done, which is very exciting. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, try to do something festive. And we're going to... We're gonna get the dog. We're gonna do Fifi Christmas. If you haven't, if you're new to my channel and you haven't met my puppy, you're gonna meet my puppy today. And if you've already, oh, she was in the first segment. I think I took her out for a walk. Uh, so yeah, Fifi's gonna get Christmas, Christmas sized today. <laughs> now I'm gonna do a little bit of grooming for the dog and also I knitted sweaters for her. So I might get out the sweaters that I knitted for her and get her dressed for in her holiday gear. <laughs> my dog is so, she's a Cocker Spaniel Poodle mix. Like we dress her up all the time. If you follow my Instagram, you'll see a photo of her. I'll post a photo today of her with sunglasses because we always put her in glasses or sunglasses. <laughs> like most people, you know, we're no different from other people. So we got the green one. We got the red one. We got some treat action. Sit. Good girl. Stay. No. Sit. Stay. Please. Yes. Sit. Stay. Go. Go on. You can pick a treat. The red one or the green one. The red one. Okay. Let's do it. You're gonna be nice and cozy. Christmas vibes going. Oh, here you go. You're all set. Merry Christmas. take advantage of the light because the light doesn't last long. Oh, the alliteration of that sentence. The light doesn't last long, y'all. <laughs> I am not a fan of, like, I love winter, but I'm not a fan of the early setting sun. Is there anyone who, I don't think there's anyone who appreciates the early setting sun. I'm here to update you. Mm, having a nice iced coffee with a little bit of nog. I'm gonna update the books that I've been reading, but I also want, I wanted to mention that I started a third book because I had two other books that I was trying to finish before I started my TBR for December, and I wasn't quite finished when I started filming this vlog, and so I finished those. And I usually, I usually am reading about three books at a time. So this is a good number for me to do a reading vlog of as well. It's just my comfort, that's my happy place is to have three books <laughs> going at the same time. Just because I like to, I don't know if I'm a mood reader or if it's just that sometimes when I'm reading a book, I just tire of it and I want to, not with everything, like thrillers and mysteries, tend to I tend to not tire of because of the, the way that they're written but fiction and clear for sure non-fiction sometimes the classics I just need to take a little break from so I like to have a couple of different books going at the same time I don't know if there's anyone else who follows that same pattern I'd be curious to know I have had a lot of people react to me where they say Oh my gosh, how can you read, how can you follow that many different storylines at the same time? And actually it's no problem for me. I don't really have an issue with it. Whew, and it's warm. I don't know, I'm wearing a sweater dress. It's it's cute, I like the color. It's like a turtleneck sweater dress. I am actually going to be going to, it's the last night of Hanukkah. So I'm gonna be going to a Hanukkah party this afternoon. And that should be really fun. I don't know if I can really vlog at their party. Um, it's possible. 
I'll try. <laughs> I'll try to get some shots of the menorah. Uh, and I know that we're having latkes and donuts, so I'm not really having lunch. <laughs> I had just a really small breakfast, so I'm trying not to eat a lot. I mean, not because I'm planning on gorging on donuts and latkes, but just because I think that's probably the only time that I'll be eating for the, for today. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be really nice. It's been such a long time since I've been to any kind of gathering, any kind of holiday gathering like that. So this is a friend of mine who has an annual Hanukkah party. And yeah, they haven't had their annual Hanukkah party for, I guess, a year or two years. Two years? No. Two years? No, I think it's only one year. I'm telling you, the pandemic is like a blur, honestly. All okay, right, to the books. Yeah, so I started The Dutch House by Anne Pratchett, and it's funny because I was at a, a friend's, I was over at a friend's for supper last night, the night before, and we were talking about Anne Pratchett and how much we really both enjoyed Commonwealth. And then I said, oh, well, I'm planning on reading The Dutch House, and she really poo-pooed, she poo-pooed, and I thought, mm. but, I don't know. I started reading it. I don't think we have the same taste. In, it's so interesting. Everyone has different tastes in, in reading, taste in music, taste in so many different things. And I've started this and I'm enjoying it so far. I'm only 50 pages in. I'm like just a teensy bit worried that I might, it might be slow or I might be bored, which seems strange to say. Uh, but that is sort of a little bit of a concern already 50 pages in. I'm kind of like, eh. I'm going to stick with it, I think, uh, just because I liked Commonwealth so much. And the writing is pleasurable to read. The characters are already engaging me. So the story is about a brother and a sister, Maeve and Danny. It's interesting because the nar narrator is Danny. And it's a male, <laughs> it's a male narrator. And I don't know, I'm trying to remember the last time I read a book that had a male narrator. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's been a while. Maybe The Picture of Dorian Gray could it be that long ago. It's always female protagonists that I, I find myself reading, or at least I noticed it enough to notice this time that I'm like, oh yeah, every time this character says I, it's a guy. Danny and Maeve, brother and sister. And so far, it's uh, the story is revolving around the house that they grew up in, and it's opening with them as children. Their mother, it's not clear whether the mother dies or whether she leaves. That's not clear to me just yet. The mother is absent, and the father remarries. And the, the opening is the new wife coming into this house, and the house is, is a, like a renowned house and they talk a little bit about the history of the house and then there have been some future or now uh, scenes with Maeve and Danny in a car sitting outside the house so I don't we don't know what's happening what whether they're going to be going in and what for uh, and they're just talking to each other about their past so like I said I'm only 50 pages in I know that the story is supposed to revolve around the house and then explores this sibling relationship, I think, but I will let you know as I roll along with it. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I don't, I don't, I think it's a good choice. Oh, and in terms of the reindeer readathon, what was the choice? So this was the one that I took for something with red on the cover because I don't know, I had trouble finding um, books with red in the cover or green in the cover in my library. Just didn't seem to have much going there. Blonde Roots. Where are we in Blonde Roots? Okay, I'm more than halfway through and what has happened is that Doris <laughs> has escaped and except that we kind of had a pause. We hit, She escaped and then we hit pause and we went back to the beginning of how she grew up and her time at home with her family in in Europa, in the UK specifically, uh, tells the story of how she was captured and her passage from Europa to Africa. Pretty gruesome stuff. I won't pretend. It was pretty gruesome to read. Uh, just the conditions on this ship and there was 
there is more to tell, but I'm going to leave it for the reader. I think the, the author, I th think Bernadine Evaristo is trying to give us just a sense of how horrendous conditions were for slaves, which I think is an important thing to do when you're tackling a topic like this in a, in a novel. But it has been quite horrific to read. So passage to Africa and then her first master, uh, where she was um, a slave that was like a playmate to the child in the house. And then there's an accident. So she is sent away from that home and ends up at the home that she has now escaped from, which is the home of a, a big slave trader. And it's from his household that she escapes. And I know that the last time I updated you, I read a couple of passages about the kinds of comparisons that the, the role reversal, the complete mirroring of cultural elements between whites and African society and between the, you know, what is considered to be the inferior ethnicity and the superior ethnicity. So, you know, whites being the inferior ethnicity and actually the section that I just finished reading is from the perspective of the slave trader. And he goes on into a whole doctrine about the savages and how, you know, they need to be saved from themselves. And so a lot of the rhetoric that we hear about slavery, a lot of the Christian rhetoric is being role reversed here to African, the African slave trader in this story. I was kind of wondering how far it was going to go in terms of this role reversal. And it's, it goes, it's pretty well maintained the whole way through. He describes the society, like it tells the story about how he's gone to Europa to collect slaves. And it's talking about his first time going to Europa and how nervous he is because it's the home of the savages, talks about his experience with them. And, you know, there's lots of funny comparisons, like just talking about their clothes and things that we take for granted that are part of our culture that we think are very normalized, but to the African dominant culture was ridiculous. So she writes, upon their heads, they wore strange objects, which I was later to learn were called hats. <laughs> <laughs> Their feet too were clad in objects called boots, which were made of animal hide. Some though were the foot objects called shoes, made of either animal hide or even stranger wood. <laughs> what crazed mind conjured up that idea? So it's really interesting to kind of see that everything completely flipped on its head. I think it's 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 not meant to be playful, but there's something playful about it. I mean, obviously that made me laugh and. Uh, but it's serious. The book is very serious. I mean, she spends some time covering things like the justification for enslaving people because of their inferior intelligence, because of the size of their brains, only it's reversed. In this case, uh, she's, she's writing that, you know, the, a larger brain, a larger structure for the jaw and all of that means greater intelligence as opposed to the smaller sized head and smaller brain, meaning lesser intelligence. And she does it in a way that's very, makes it just so obvious how completely ridiculous it is. Someone just decided based on a measurement, which of course is what happened to justify the slave trade by whites, by Christians. He also describes, um, just his opinion of his experience when he goes over to Europa and is among the savages when he goes over the first time. His host says, you have to, because he's talking about how, you know, their behavior is absolutely crazed. Things like torture and burning witches at the stake and all of these things that are, that he is like, oh, this is just madness. You know, what kind of, these are savages. And uh, his host says, you have to remember that they're not like us, Captain, not like us at all. Studying me intensely to gauge my reaction. I do not me need reminding of that. I countered looking up at a sky drained of color, drained of life, drained of humanity, drained of sanity. Would that I were gone from this abominable place. I had seen and heard enough. So, yeah. I mean, aside from it being difficult to read in parts, I'm, I'm enjoying this read. Uh, at this point, I've gotten to book three and we're back to, we're back with Doris and she's on her path to escape. And 
there's a suspenseful moment where, oh, and also the captain, one thing that we learn when the captain goes to get the slaves in Europa is that he, some of the slaves that he buys, he brings back 400 slaves or something, and some of the slaves that he buys, in fact, are Doris's, the rest of the members of Doris's family. Because when she was, when she was captured, she was by herself in the forest and she was captured then and she thought that she would never see her family again. So I'm thinking that she maybe is going to see her family again down the line in terms of the story of this one character. I will update you when I'm finished, but I do think that this is worth my time. I don't know if I go so far as to say I'm enjoying it, but I think it's really interesting. Enjoying wouldn't be the right word because some of it's pretty hard to read, as I mentioned. And then we have da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. In my dreams I hold a knife. I am who I mean I did have to stop myself because I was like I don't want to finish this yet. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I am at page 273, chapter 39, the now now what i really love about this book is yes it's a mystery yes it's set in an academic setting yes it's a group of friends and there's betrayal there are a lot of secrets that are being revealed as we go the characters are very human they're very humanized and the problems are like dark serious life problems and I feel that she's just doing such a really great job of creating complex characters that are in complex relationships, in addition to building on this mystery of what happened to their friend uh, who was killed, why was she killed, and who killed her. So you're trying to figure out who killed her, you think maybe you figured it out, and then you know that that can't be the answer, but then you're also wrecking your brain because you're like, what could be the answer? And I kept thinking, well, I hope she doesn't pull someone in from outside the friend group from like completely on the periphery, because that wouldn't work. So I think that I can trust this author not to do that. I will let you know when I do my final thoughts on these three books. But yeah, and there's a love triangle. And I am telling you, I know I mentioned it before, but I'm telling you there's, a, there's like the 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 emotional and intimate scenes are so well written. Ah, it's quite, quite, uh, like my heart starts to bound for the, for the, for the characters that are in love. I, that has not happened to me in a really long time. So I have, I don't know, maybe less than a hundred pages left to read of this. I might finish it tonight. I might finish it tomorrow because I don't, might want to save it. Uh, I think I'll probably get these two finished during the vlog and this one I will probably um, maybe not finish for the vlog or maybe I'll wrap up the vlog when I'm finished this. I'm not really sure. But if I don't wrap this one up for the vlog, uh, I'll go, I'll, I'll cover my wrap up at the end of my month. The, the month end wrap up. Oh my gosh, how do we say that? Reading wrap up. December reading wrap up. There's so much lingo to learn for booktube. Anyway, like my nails, everyone? Can you see them? Ooh. So yeah, I'm gonna go party, eat some latkes, eat some donuts, drink some mulled wine. Here's the thing. <laughs> so, I'm not naming any names. But does anybody out there have friends who are anti-vax? <laughs> I'm expecting to encounter some of that. And It'll be really interesting to see, see how I navigate all of that. I do have a couple of friends, more than one, who are absolutely like 100% anti-vax. Myself, no. No, I, I have both of my vaccines. My daughter has both of her vaccines. My parents have their vaccines. But I get that there are people who just are not comfortable with it. And there are just a lot of people too that are so, so upset about the way the governments are behaving when it comes to the vaccines. And honestly, if I play devil's advocate, I can see that side. I can see that fear. I can see that worry. I can see that concern. It's a difficult one. But I also know that <laughs> I am also, com I completely can see that the problem of the unvaccinated is a serious problem for the vaccinated or for the population. So I think I'll leave it there. I can't even believe that I tried to uh, 
bridge this topic in my vlog. What was I thinking? It's holiday time. It's reading time. It's not political time. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's me. How are ya? I'm gonna take you on uh, my like morning yoga. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna just shake out the cobwebs. You know what I mean? a new little car thing and it's kind of annoying hi everyone i'm so warm like it's so cold here in uh, montreal we got some snow happening you can see it out my window oh yes so i just came to see just came from seeing my dad my folks and that's really cute i i really had a nice visit with them but I think I'm going to wrap up this vlog here because I have to brush home because I just realized that uh, the Christmas tree is being delivered today. Which I'm really excited about, but I thought it was being delivered tomorrow afternoon as opposed to this afternoon. So now I've got to brush home and I'm always rushing around. That's the truth. Okay, so I finished In My Dreams I Hold at Night. I loved the love story. I love the, there was a love story. I didn't realize there was going to be a love story. Now I'm like, maybe I should start reading romances. I liked the love story. I thought it was good. The ending was good. I thought it was believable. I don't know how I feel about the main character. I'm still trying to sort out how I feel about the main character. And like I, I don't know. I think it was really good. It was more than just your your normal kind of mystery thriller in that there was really great character development in this book. So I think that is, has a lot going for it. It was fun in the sense that it, you know, was this group of friends. And of course, there were so many secrets that got revealed about the different friends. So that was really, I thought, very true to life. And it's super well written. Like, I know that my comment is like, oh, it's so well written. But that actually has a big influence on me. If a story is well written, then it's very easy to be absorbed in the telling of the story and the characters in the book and this does that really well. I wasn't able to predict the the murderer correctly uh, although I had my suspicions but of course you have your suspicions because you're led to believe that you know it's an, it's one of the people in this group of friends so i don't i would definitely recommend it. it's definitely a good read if i have further commentaries i'll have to let them settle in my mind and i'll talk about them in my wrap up i'm very excited though this is the second book that i finished for the reindeer readathon Woohoo! go team candy cane the other book that i finished was blonde roots which i think i've spoken quite a bit about already in the vlog just to kind of give some it's been settling in my mind you know kind of what how do i feel about that book what's my reaction to it honestly it it sort of was a bit disappointing it wasn't as great as i thought it was going to be because somehow she couldn't get beyond although they were very witty and astute comparisons that were being made through this reversal of european slaves versus african slaves and i think she was able to generate like more understanding for me in the reading of the book of the experience of slaves in a certain way i just that's all there was though like there was a bit of a story but i wanted there to be more of a story i wanted there to be more character development and the thing is the book wasn't very long so she could have done that like i I do think that she could have done a little bit more with the characters. So some of the characters were flat and I don't know, it just, there were not a lot of twists and turns. There was like one twist that I thought was good. Kind of mixed review on that one. I don't know. I don't think it was the right place for me to start with Bernadine Everisto. Maybe I should have started somewhere else with her. I'm going to wrap up this vlog here. Oh, and just a brief uh, mention on the Dutch house. It's totally sucked me in. I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely 
I'm about halfway through, so I'm not going to finish it in the end for this vlog. It's totally family drama. Like, and family drama that is like mixed family stepmother drama and brother and sister drama and stepbrother and sister. It's, it's really, really good so far. And actually, I heard, I kind of wish that I'd, I kind of wish that I was listening to the audiobook for this one because apparently the audiobook is narrated by Tom Hanks. I mean, I'm not like a crazy Tom Hanks fan, but I think. I was saying before that I had to like adjust to the narrator being a man because I'm so used to having female narrators. I've been, I think almost, I'm going to go back and look through all the books that I read this year and see how many were male narrators. I think it might only be like The Picture of Dorian Gray, A Little Life. And then I think I read some horror that was also in the miso soup for sure. Not very many narrators who are men, so... Anyway, I, I was like, oh, I should have checked that out. But it's too late now. I'm going to listen to uh, The Idiot by uh, Ila Fatiman. And I already started it, actually, and I got a puzzle out. And I'm going <laughs> to gonna get uh, kind of into the Christmas spirit. The Christmas tree is coming today. And, hey, I decided that I was going to start another vlog this weekend. <laughs> so everyone's going to get to see me, de me uh, decorating the Christmas tree and maybe, well, I'm going to have to pick my next reads as well for the next week of the Rain uh, Reindeer Readathon. One of the things that I'm having a hard time with is you are, one of the prompts is to um, choose a book by a new author, someone who's new to you. And I just have a lot of different possibilities for that. In my TBR, I spoke about uh, Yajiasi, who I now know how to pronounce her name. I was going to read Home Going by Yajiasi because I've never read any of her books. But now I'm kind of like, I've never read any Sally Rooney, so maybe I should read Conversations with Friends. And also, like, I've never read other, like, kind of really important people that I want to read, like, for example, I've never read any James Baldwin. I've never read any Toni Morrison. There's a mystery writer who I have never read, who I heard is really great. I've forgotten her name right now. So I have a lot of different possibilities of things I could read. So yeah, decisions to be made. Tune in. Bye. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give her a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you like what you're seeing. Yeah, and if you don't like this video, why don't you just keep it to yourself? Yeah. I'm so excited for the Christmas tree. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get over there. I'm gonna get the newspaper down and the tissue paper down and then get the stand up from the basement. Bye. Bye, everyone. You can hit the like button if you like this video and you can, what are all the things? Oh, there's a bell that you can ring.